So hi, the time is now. Hello everyone. So welcome to the talk on developing on containers with dev containers. So before I start more, I have a question for you. So the question is, how many of you have felt this in your day-to-day -day life? There's a project you want to, but your office laptop is not that good. Can I get a, okay, a lot of hands. And this is one of the problems which this talk will be covering. So before that, let me talk a bit about myself. Who am I? So I'm Ritik, and I'm coming all the way from India to here. I'm a platform advocate at Lock Labs and a CNCF ambassador. I've done a couple of certification, and this is my first OSS EU. So today we will focus on the first two. Uh, like at Lock Labs, we built open source tools, and we have built a couple of them. Depot is like uh, open source code spaces, which we will talk about. But we have also built solutions like for multi-tenancy and dev environments. So let's go deeper. So previously, the traditional way. So when I just started in university, like four years back, so I graduated this year. So there was a problem. Uh, I wanted to learn Linux. I wanted to learn all about containers. But the problem was. Uh, the laptop. I was a student. I didn't have a budget to get the most uh, fancy MacBook. So I started with my Windows laptop, but the problem was a lot of things were incompatible with Windows. I try WSL just launched and WSL wasn't that powerful. As well as I wanted to try GPU and all of those things for AI workloads, but that wasn't possible because my machine sucked. So what I did was I created a VM on Azure which I used to get for free as being a student. And I used to uh, use that by SHHing into it and run my workloads. The process was cumbersome, but again, it was uh, smooth because I could download a lot of things. Like if I'm a student and I'm pulling in a couple of gigabits of Docker images, it's very slow, the bandwidth, but I could use the Azure bandwidth to do that. So this uh, made me realize there are a couple of more problems which as a student I face, but at the enterprise level, more of the people face. The problems are hardware updates. So uh, right now, we are excelling very fast. Our hardwares are getting outdated. So you need to recycle your hardware as soon as possible so that you can be custom to all the new things that is happening. Second problem was declarative manifest. Whenever you onboard to a team or you try to go to an open source project, you want that to run on your machine so that you can contribute to it. But the problem was you can have a wiki which declares everything, but the problem is cumbersome because you need to go through each step one by one. What if we have a solution which does all that for you, like Terraform for infrastructure, something for your dev environments? Second was isolation. There might be a chance that you are running a couple of Python version, couple of system tool version, while you are working on different projects in a team. It might be also you are trying to upgrade your tool chain from one version to another version, like you are creating a new CRD or something like that. So you need different versions of tool. So how do you do that? There is no isolation. For Python, you can have a Python virtual environment, but what about system level tools? That is most of the times not possible unless and until you are going into virtualization layer. Next is managing a lot of dependencies and version. Suppose you are updating your Python version of a tool chain or something like that. You need to have some infra or some place where you can do that smoothly, including testing and all those. So what if you have an isolated place to do that? Next is portability. You have a dev environment. Your team requires a similar dev environment. But how do you make sure it's portable across different teams? The, to, uh, the environment as well as the experience of having that environment. One of the most important things I felt was like cloud power. What if you want more cloud power, like more bandwidth, when you are dealing with bigger images, bigger network and all those things, as well as more compute. When you are working on a new project in your team, which requires GPU. So how do you do that? There, is no, no, there was no standard apart from you going to a VM provider and manually configuring everything on your own. Last, 
but not least everything uh, you can do everything on your own and it is very possible but again developers are expensive and if you are trying to make them do all those things we kind of mess their developer experience which is one of the most important things companies should focus on because developer experience is how uh, we are focusing and improving it a lot of companies care about user experience and the problem is not a lot of them care about developer experience because developers are like their employees so it's okay they will manage their work is to manage this is the general motivation in a team but again uh, this is something which is gradually changing as new tools are coming into the picture where more people are focusing on that front so we want developers to not go through this and like a lot of them go through this on every day but we want to reduce the percentage of people go through this so i think microsoft saw this and um, there was something also called infrastructure as a code which came in between and it gives some inspiration for the things i'm going to talk about so with iac the thing was it is self documenting your infrastructure can be documented by using scripts which can deploy a infrastructure you want without focusing on the special needs and everything you can just define everything and whenever you apply that there is a infra which you want running lexis it doesn't get stagnated because your code is your declaration so it helps you in that way lossis it helps with onboarding suppose you want a dev environment a prod environment and another environments so how do you do that you just apply the same infrastructure code definitions across all your environments and just change the values which is required it is so simple so what do we come from then microsoft looked at it and they created a open source specification called dev containers so diving deep into what is dev container so dev container is a specification comes in the dev container.json file and it defines everything you want in your dev environment so it defines workspace like what you are working on including the all the like languages extensions attributes as well as all your things that when the environment spins up will run through also it is used by a lot of providers it is used by github code spaces which is growing very popular and it is also used by tools like devpod which we will talk just in a bit so focusing on what dev container json is we want to understand what dev containers is at basis so whenever we talk about production container we talk about a lot of things and a lot of things include minimizing the production container size as well as minimizing the threat level so how do we do that we do it by removing all the layers removing all the unnecessary libraries removing everything that is not required but when we talk about development container we talk the opposite way we try to include everything all the system libraries all the tool chain we require over there because we are developing something and we want all the run times the shared libraries as well as sdks debuggers extensions your customization so that you feel like home whenever you are developing at a new workspace as well as your source code so if you see there are three types of things there is a inner need there is a outer loop as well as your deployed apps so when we are talking about just dev containers we just focus on the first two and try to include everything and how do we include that we include that using a simple specification so what do we include we include our code we include all the project libraries the system packages the ids in which we want our tool to run so if you are in uh, all your team mates use jetbrains so you can specify that as well as well as your extensions so some teams have specific linting and uh, configuring extensions so you can specify exactly those like for example uh, here we had a extension spell checker so you can specify those so that your whole team is on the same lane last is you can specify whatever compute resources you want over there and you can launch the dev container over there next going on is uh, we will just see a simple dev container example so that we understand how things are working so as you get it it's just a simple json and we specify that we want a go image over here 
and we uh, mention the posts which will be forward whenever the new project is launched and there is something called pre-build as well so whenever you are creating a container it pulls the images it builds everything together it takes time and then there is a bigger team a better way is to cache all of that so you can pre-build the things so that whenever a new teammate or a new open source contributor comes to your project they can just click on a couple of buttons select their provider and launch their workspace either locally or on the cloud so it is good like everything like dev container what is it and all those things but again the question is how to use that like dev container is a specification and you need a tool uh, to use it so how to so last year what my company did is they open sourced something called dev pod so it was something which we were building internally and using as well then when we open sourced it uh, kind of went quite good on hacker news like it was trending and then we also launched it as product hunt so there was a lot of noise our slack community grew and with that uh, our stars grew so we are a complete oss product as well as last time i checked it had around 8600 stars and what is it then so going back depot is an open source tool it can be a cli or it can be your desktop application so we'll go a bit into it with time so the thing which we want to focus over there is it's unopinionated you can have any provider you want you can have any id you want you can have any repo you want you are not restricted on certain things and you can use anything you want uh, to run any workspace you want across your company so let's break down on certain specific things so the basic concept is workspace so workspace are like your development containers where your code logic is hosted so it runs as a container and you can switch it on off whenever you want and pause it cache it all those things the next thing is source code so generally uh, what we saw that only a couple of uh, you can uh, with another tools you can just use the get repository but again in companies you might require hardened images or some specific folders so we included all of those like you can use your commit your branch your subfolders your local folders your images and all those things uh, for that <laughs> and azure devops um, i don't know but apart from that we included providers so now you have your code setup but where you will run those so code setup is like providers is where your infrastructure is hosted and we have included some of them which we built like those are the ones which we built like docker kubernetes some of the popular clouds but again uh, we have open sourced this as well so now you can have any providers and we saw that and we saw that our community provided around 10 more providers over here so uh, right now we support equinix hetzner and all those because uh, the community is providing more providers so most of them are open source and you can contribute to it and use it for your workspaces next is ids so if you see this is a very long range of ids which we put in and what we do is whenever we create a workspace we connect it with shh so your ids can be anything you want according to your customization and you can also customize the extensions you want in your id so if you want vs code jetbrains cursor jupyter fleet anything works on that and uh, we are responsible for the transport so the tool takes an account for the security and everything and does that and last is credentials so if you have a private repo which you want to pull how do you um, pass the credentials to depot so it can pull it so we do it in a couple of ways we sync your git credentials uh, from agent and what you can do another thing is like suppose you want the credentials to be synced to your workspace that is also very much possible because you can enable that next is when you are with docker we can forward your docker credential into the workspace and lastly one of the most popular providers we have is kubernetes 
and which we can use to use image pool secrets for that. Last is GPG. GPG forward can be also work and we pick your git sign key so that it works streamlined. Next is pre-builds. So what are exactly pre-builds? As I was talking, it's a way to cache your images because if there is a big image, a big layers and with a lot of tools, it might take a lot of time. So when you have pre-builds, it becomes, everything becomes smooth because we configure the pre-built using a dev container JSON, like the standard which you are using, and then you can run the workspace in a couple of seconds. So right now we will see an example in some time to see how long it takes without a pre-built. And when you configure pre-built, it takes faster. Last is how do you use the pod anyways? So the first step is to initialize your provider. So initializing provider is like understanding where you want your workspace to run. It can be the cloud, it can be a local machine, it can be a cluster, something like that. Then is, uh, if you are using cloud, what we do is we create a virtual machine over there and we host all the workspaces over there. So it's like a VM for containers. But if you don't want to use virtual machines, you can use the Kubernetes provider which just runs your workspace in the Kubernetes cluster. So all of your team can use a single shared cluster to run your workspaces. Last is you create a JSON specification. Generally what we have seen is your central IT team does that for you so that your whole team has a set standard across every devices. So it, there's a no problem that it doesn't work on my machine. Everything is streamlined, even your workspace. And then last is you connect and launch your IDE. Next is how does the architecture work on a high level? So there is a dev container where we inject a dev pod agent and there is the dev pod tool that can be your CLI or your desktop application. Then we port forward that using a SHH remote extension and we connect your ID with your dev pod agent. And lastly, suppose you are working on a web application or something like that. You can also port forward the, from your VS code or your ID to your browser so you can go with the visual changes lastly let's see a demo because demos are cool and it gives us a basic understanding on how things work when there is a lot of theory one of the things which i used to do in college was skip the classes because it was a lot of theory but again the best learnings were when i did that on my laptop at my home there was no depot at that time, so uh, creating a VM. So let's see how the process works. But before that, I want you to go to depot.sh or you can scan this QR so you can maybe just go to the tool. I will wait a couple of seconds over here so that everyone has scanned. If the QR code is, code is small at the back, it is the same spelling as depot.sh. Okay, uh, once you have scanned, uh, we'll just go into the raw demo. Uh, one second. <laughs> so this is a general UI. There is a CLI as well, but UI is more friendly when you are doing a demo. So you can just go and see these things. So workspace is as described where your environment is running and providers, I have three over here. One is Google Cloud, there is a Docker and there's Kubernetes. So this is where your workspace will run. 
for this demo, we will just go with the Google Cloud example. So it is very simple. You just go and click on Create Workspace. And then you choose what you want. There are a couple of samples over here. For example, if we just want to do the Go sample, you just click on Go. And then again, you have the option to choose your provider again. And then you can choose any ID you want. The latest we, which we added yesterday was Cursor. But uh, for simplicity, we'll just go choose VS Code. And then you can just give it a name, I from OSS, something like that. And then you can add your pre-built, but we will skip this page right now because we haven't configured pre-built. And uh, we'll just go and click on Create Workspace. So when we click on Create Workspace, what it does is like it goes to your API call for GCP and it just asks it to create a virtual machine. And it takes time because we are provisioning our VM over here. And when we use something like a Kubernetes provider, all those things are uh, in background because we are not just configuring anything. We are just running a container over there. So let's, it will take some time because it is just trying to uh, create a virtual machine. But before that, if anyone has any question, I'm, I would love to answer those. Any questions? Yeah. OK. Uh, Mike. Where's Mike? Uh, it will be back. I think. Um, okay, how about this? Yeah, it's good. Do you have any idea what impact this has on cost in an organization? Do you have numbers or research? Yeah, we are doing on a report. I have some numbers at the end of the slides. But again, I will send you more details. So generally, if you are using, uh, like, uh, are you comparing it with normal hardware or with different providers? If I wanted to propose this to my organization, mm -hmm. I would have to make the case that it saves money. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense. So there are two uh, factors when you are proposing this to your organization. One is cost, which we can help you with the calculation. And second is developer experience as well. So. Yep, uh, I have some numbers, but not very detailed that I can present over here. But yep, uh, there was one more. Yep. Yeah. So in the top right, I see Dev for Pro. Uh, is there pricing or is it open source? What's uh, so the normal version, when you can go and create workspace, it's free. Pro is when you want a central admin IT, where you can provision quotas to your teams. So that is not open source. That is how we make money so that they can fund my travel to here. But yeah, that, that is it. But the open source version is that normal dev pod, which we can go over here. And you can just download it and run. So as you see, uh, the, just the logs went away. But uh, there's this VS code, which has connected to dev pod. And we are running this with the latest Go version. We can run the code, but again, uh, running late. So going back to the slide, uh, when you want to delete this, it is as simple as deleting this. And what it does is it deletes the infra with it. So you don't have to manage the infra when you are managing the workspace. So we can just click on here. And if you go to the Google Cloud Console, I should have done before this. Ah, uh, thank you. But again, I think it's gone by the time I go there, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, anyways, I missed that between part. But anyways, let's go with, I think I will just create one more till the time we talk. Yeah. So going back to the use case, where can we use it? So the cost is one of the factors. So first is Linux, 
so this is a bit close to me, but when we pitch, we don't pitch it. Uh, so when I was a student, I used to do this uh, because I had a Windows machine and the WSL sucked. Um, so I used to run all the controllers and everything on a virtual machine. And this is something which a lot of people want actually. The next is, uh, it is 100% open source and free. So a lot of tools in the market, you need to pay some bucks. And when you compare with it, it is free and extensible. Like you can extend anything you want on your local machine as well. Next is rapid onboarding to your team. So as we are configuring everything you want, you just need to go and click some buttons over there. As well as it helps the internal teams as well as external teams because if you are cooperating an open source project, it helps for developers to come back. Oh, it's here, let's see. Yeah, and uh, this is a machine which we created in the back. But again, if you delete this, this goes away. <sighs> okay, now coming back to the cost savings. So when we compare it to the existing solutions, it is 5 to 10% cheaper because we have uh, something called inactivity timeout. So whenever you are not using a code space, there is a cost. But whenever you're not using a depot, it can be shut down automatically. As well as one thing is which is important, you can use your discounted uh, uh, contracts which you have with the cloud for this. So you save costs on that front as well because you are not requiring the same infra again and again. Last is uh, you can use cloud providers or for compliance reasons, your external providers which you are hosting because what we have seen in medical use cases, they want everything to be on their infra that can be public cloud. So you can create a provider on your own and use it as well. That should work. Last is better DevEx. Coming back to the same thing. Uh, so your teams will have a consistent environment across all the teams, as well as uh, one of the most important problems which our engineering team faces uh, debugging. So when you can share the environments, as well as when you can uh, share the similarity with the environments, the time reduced for debugging is very less. And last is self-service. So a lot of teams, like a lot of AI researchers want GPUs, everything provisions, everything configured. So how do you do that? You can just go to your IT request and your uh, GPU and all those things. But again, if you have everything configured, your IT doesn't require to be involved apart from the first time it is there. You can configure everything using self-service. So whenever a new dev or a new researchers come to a team, they can just self-service the cluster they want and the workspace they want. It is as simple as that. As well as uh, one of the most important thing is improving the scalability of projects. So when you're expanding and having more users over there, that can be as streamlined as possible. Last is conclusions to take. So you can, have the pod manage the infrastructure as the environment. So as we saw, if we are deleting this, it will delete the infra as well with it. And as well as if you are having a cluster with a lot of users over here, so you can manage it centrally as well. Okay, not this sure. <laughs> Last is uh, checking out the pod as the OSS solution. So here's a link to our Slack. So if you have any further questions, you can just uh, join the Slack and let me know. I'm also here. Also, what we are working on is like, so DevPod is a very new concept and Dev Containers is also a very new concept. So people need something to relate to. So personally, I'm working on something called DevPod Templates. So like we will go, if you want to scan. So it is a collection of all the things you can do with like for example, a tool with another tool, like if you are using uh, seal secrets, you might need the cube seal CLI. So how can how can you configure everything together? So whenever you launch a workspace, you will have your cube seal CLI. So there are a lot of examples over here, which you can use. I will give this till everyone has done scanning. And last is, if you want to connect with me, I'm here as well. 
and on socials as well so you can do that easily and I'm here for any questions if there's uh, any because we have some time Yeah. Uh, uh, like custom containers as in custom images yeah. yeah that is possible because we support a image tag as well so you can b bring your custom images and you can have docker files as well like um, if we go to the depot templates so suppose you want a docker file dev container you can define the docker file you want over here so you can configure your docker file as well as you can uh, specify a custom image that is possible yeah please Yeah, so that that sort is comparing uh, comparing the virtual machines. If you start using it on your own, or something like if you are using third-party providers which does everything on your own, like some tools which manage the pro, uh, your workspaces, like code spaces, get part. So we are comparing that with it. But there is another comparison when you are comparing your whole cost with your machines. Yeah. Times is the keyword because uh, you save that's cost. Yeah, that is a lot, and that's the reason we are getting some customers as well right now. Uh, also, we have some depot stickers over here in the front row. So, if you want to grab, we would love to. Any other questions? Or uh, no questions? Thank you so much for coming to my talk, and.